Well, all right, welcome back to Team Let's Play Games. Uh, I bring to you, as promised, my Despia deck profile. Uh, this is the Despia deck I've been playing at locals, and I've been winning a lot with them topping multiple uh, local events. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do very good at the uh, VIP tournament qualifier that we had this past Sunday, but it was a 52-player tournament, and we had plenty of competition. Uh, Despia was represented. Uh, it didn't make the top tables. But I'm going to go over my deck list and um, my my choices that I played for the event. Uh, I will be making a few changes coming up shortly, so I'll let, be sure to update you guys. Um, just a disclaimer, this is a pure Despia list. So that means I'm not playing DPE, I'm not playing the Frightford package, and I'm not playing the Adventure package. I have all of those engines. Um, I tried them. Um, yes, while it does give you a higher ceiling, I find the breaking appalling. It breaks way too much for my liking. And I like to always be able to play the game. And I find that even in the pure Despia build, I can still do all of my combos. And even if I do somehow brick, my bricks are always going to be useful cards that are going to either prevent my opponent from playing or assist me to, you know, stall out until I get my starters. So we're going to go over our deck profile today. I'm going to bring to you my main deck, side deck, as well as the extra deck. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you my card choices in a little bit more detail than I did in the last video. And let's begin. So... For our main deck, we are going to be playing the three Alubers. Alubers, the best card in the deck. Uh, you always want to see him. Uh, this is literally the deck's Alistair. Uh, he's the bread and butter combo. He's a great card. Uh, 1800 attack, uh, zero defense, level four dark. Um, on normal or special summon, he's allowed to search any Despia spell or trap card, which is very useful. Also, his grave effect does come up quite often where they destroy a fusion monster or a, a fusion monster leaves the field because of them, then my Alice, and he'll trigger in the grave targeting one of a monster they control. Negating that monster and special summoning itself all happening in grave, which is very useful. Um, after Alibur, we have the next best card, the card you always also want to see, is going to be our Despian Tragedy. Tragedy is extremely good. So his effect is when he's sent to the grave or banished by a card effect, you can add one Despia monster from your deck to your hand, except Tragedy. Um, that comes up a lot. It's very useful for the Despia combo. Um, I don't know if you guys know the combo. If you would like for me to uh, explain that to you in greater detail, please comment below, and I'll be make sure, uh, be happy to make sure a combo video. But he's always really good to have especially in hand and especially with your branding opening he gives you essentially the highest ceiling i know some people cut this card to two me personally uh i feel three is best because i always want to see it but if you did want to cut something feel free to cut this at two but i personally don't um next we have our despian comedy i wasn't originally playing comedy but comedy is really useful comedy comes up really clutch when you already have the tragedy and you don't really need to search another one. So if I resolve the tragedy off the branding opening, I don't really need to resolve it off my branded fusion. So that's why tra uh, comedy will be uh, best to send in that situ situation because you can get him to grave and he gives you a little bit of uh, flexible utility. So his effects reads is when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a face up Despia cards or cards you control, quick effect, you can discard, uh, discard, discard, negate that effect. Um, that effect I've literally never used. The one that I'm really using for is the second one, which is if this card is in your graveyard, quick effect. You contribute one fusion monster, special summon this card. You can only activate one Despian, Despian comedy effect per turn and only once that turn. That comes up during the combo when you send it off your Lobelion. And if they had like something like, let's say, an Imperm or an Effect Veiler or maybe like a Droplets or something, this is really like one of the best ways to play around it. Because if they don't send, um, like, a monster off the droplets, you can chain the comedy to trigger the fusion and completely make a missed target. So this card is very good. But I wouldn't play it more than one. And uh, honestly, it can be cut. But I personally like it. Uh, our next card is going to be Des uh, Ad Libidium of Despia. This card here, it's actually very good. And I am thinking about bumping things up to two because in a grinding game, this card is really broken. So this is also a part of uh, the combo. You're always usually going to search this card off of Tragedy. This card here is when it's banished or used as fusion material. It allows you to uh, monster reborn a fusion monster that 
was either or not fusion muscle Elijah reborn a monster that was either in your grave or face up banish pot which is really broken when you want to bring back like a broken dragoon or a mirror jade that was outed or like maybe a um, chimera or something like that uh but during the tournament this weekend i've resolved this effect almost all the time during the combo but i did notice that late game some grindy matchups especially during the mirror match i really wish i had a second one if not you really have to go out of your way to make sure you add him back from your face up banish pile from um the searing dragon effect but this card is really good i'm really considering buffing this up the two uh next we have the double fallen of albaz now playing the commons i have the secrets i spent the money on the secrets but the issue i had with the secrets i kept seeing this card in my hand and it's not the worst card to have in hand but i do not want to see it in my hand since i started playing the common i see it a lot less and it's way more consistent this way. And this card, we all know what it does by now. It's really broken. It's essentially a super poly uh, on normal or special. You can discard one card and fusion summon uh, a fusion monster using materials on um, both sides of the, uh, one material on each side of the field. It has to be him. You can't use any other monsters you control. Uh, but he's really good. Um, and I think two is fine. You can cut this to one, but you do have to be careful with the recursion. And also, if you ever unfortunately see it, it's really kind of unpleasant to have. Like it's it's a weird workaround because cards like um like certain cards become a little harder to utilize to their full potential. Uh, and we also have the one light seal, the hex seal fusion. This is how we get to our dragoon. Um, this card is really good. It can be whatever name you want. Uh, if it's in your hand, it's also useful because it can always be a Fallen of Albaz. And the light uh, attribute comes up because it allows you to summon your Searing Dragon. Uh, I mean, excuse me, your Branded Dragon from the extra deck using uh, Branded Fusion. So that really comes up. Uh, for our spells, we're playing our three Branding Opening. This is one of our best cards in the deck. Very good. Uh, opening this in Tragedy is one of the best combos you have. Uh, you could utilize this in draw phase uh, and do your um, Alibur special summon as well as your tragedy search all in draw phase to help you avoid cards like Droll and Lockbird. Uh, especially that comes in clutch, especially when you're playing like uh, the Adventurer package, uh, Fight for package, you know, things like that because they do a lot of searching so you become much more susceptible to Droll and Lockbird. And um, the Grave effect where you can protect the fusion monster from uh, destruction by banishing usually always comes up. Your opponent usually is never going to read it, never going to forget it, so that can utilize a lot. Uh, for our next spells, we have the three brand infusions, the god card of the deck. Uh, this is the card that's taking this deck to the next level. Uh, it's essentially the Sajal fusion of the deck. It's really broken. Uh, I'm really happy with this card. Unfortunately, I got my structure deck, and I noticed that two of them are actually damaged um, from factory error, so I'm not happy about that. I thought it was essentially like nail damage from somebody poking it, but... When I looked, I seemed like, hey, it's on multiple of the cards. And I did hear other people were having issues with the quality of this as well. But, hey, it's still brand infusion. You can still read it. It still does what it does. I have no complaints. I'm not going to go out of my way to, you know, swap them out and fix them. But, again, best card in the deck. You're always going to want to see it. If you don't have it, you're going to search it. You're going to find a million ways to get this. This is your best card. And our next best fusion card is definitely branded in red. I played three because three is very important because... Um, you do search it off of the Ice Shade of the Branded Dragon uh, combo where you send it on end phase and search on the end phase. However, if you hard open this, it gives you an additional disruption because you won't have to waste uh, a Mirror Jade Banish searching this out because you have it already. So essentially you can use the Mirror Jade Banish to banish one of your opponent's monsters then resolve it to uh, do the Chimera play and bring them back. And now the Mirror Jade is live again on that turn. So it's really good when it comes to that regard. Also, it doesn't specify Despia monsters, so you can bring out anything. So if you hard open like the Hex Seal or something, you can uh, always use that as Albaz. Or if you have um, the... Or if you have a dragon on field, you can always use that as a, um, a Dark Magician to make your Dragoon. So this Brandon in Red, one of the best quick play spells ever. Uh, and for our last Despia Trap, we're playing Despia Theater of the Branded. This card here, it is cuttable, but why I enjoy this card, I find it one of the best fusion cards. Because 
Essentially, what it reads is, during your main phase, you can fusion summon one level 8 or a higher fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. If a face-up non-fairy, oh, excuse me, a face-up non-fusion fairy monster you control leaves the field by an opponent card effect or is destroyed by battle, you can target one level 8 or higher fusion monster in your graveyard, special summon it. You can only use each effect of Despia, Theater of the Brandon, once per turn. That's really good. It's essentially a generic fusion spell. So this card essentially, in my opinion, replaces the entire Fright for package because yes, you get additional cards off of it. So it gives you additional discard fodder, which always comes up clutch. And you have your super polys to, you know, get your additional fusion plays to bring more monsters out, especially when you're going for um, the OTK push or if you're like, you know, in an awkward position. But this card is usually searchable off of Alubird, and if you open up Fusion, um, uh, uh, Brandon Red or Brandon Fusion, nine times out of ten, this is the next best card to search because now you have all your Fusion spells, so it gives you another level of play that you can um, work around. And also, if you have like a kind of breaky hand and you open this card, it'll give you like essentially a way to get into your Chimera because it's essentially just a polymerization. I personally like this. I'm debating on cutting it to make room for the second ad lib, but it came up a lot. If you it's not a brick if you hard open it because the fusion effect is very useful. But I like this card. I think more people should definitely play this. And now I'm going to go to my quick play lineup. So these are spells that I played out are quick play spells, and I feel like they're super strong this format. We have the three cross out designator. Self explanatory because hand traps are super prevalent in this format. Most of all the decks are playing the same uh, hand traps. If you're playing the adventurer package, this is a great card in here because literally everyone's playing the adventurer, so it gives you something to hit in that deck as well. Um, also, uh, this makes sure your branded um, fusion resolves. We have the one call by the grave. Only reason I'm playing one because it's only at one. This is legit one of the best quick play spells of all time. One of my favorite cards of all time. You can hit a lot of different cards, super versatile. You can hit hand traps, monsters. It comes up uh, if you don't resolve it. It's one of the best cards to set. I personally love this card. Um, I've literally been playing this card ever since it's come out, and I don't think I can ever play a deck without it. Uh, triple Forbidden Droplets. Droplets is great, especially when you're going second. Uh, there's a lot of scenarios where... Uh, I had to play through an opponent's board uh, when I would resolve my branded opening in uh, the draw phase, trying to bait out and negate. They would always try to negate it, and I can always chain the droplet, sending the opening to get a free negate and, you know, save my card resources. Droplet is a god card this format. Good going first, good going second. Um, definitely play three. Give me great uh, great utility card. Can't play without it. Uh, when, again, if you're playing Despias, you have absolutely zero to uh, zero excuse to not be playing uh, triple super poly. God card, broken, cannot be responded to make materials using your opponent's materials. In the mirror match, he who sees super poly wins the game. Playing two triple tactic talents. Um, this card is really good because they always, you, you know, hand traps are prevalent, adventure is prevalent, you're going second, they're always going to try to disrupt you. Um, I usually always resolve the draw two effect or steal a monster effect, depending on what's on the field, but Talents is a great card. Uh, if you don't have it, feel free to cut it, but I personally like it. I feel three would be a little bit cloggy because I've never really, um, I don't want to see multiples of these cards, especially when they're hard once per turn. Uh, now we're going to go to our hand trap lineup. Uh, for hand traps, I'm playing Triple Ash. Uh, Ash is a god card. I want to see it every game. Um, it hits on literally every deck if, you know, you can't play without it. Uh, we're playing Double Bell. I'm only playing Two Bell because I need it as a cross-out target. Um, and also, it's, it's solid in other matchups, but... I can't tell you how many times I had Bell in hand and wish it was an Ash because, you know, every deck doesn't, you know, revise from the grave as much as Ash. But Bell's a great card. Um, I definitely uh, recommend playing it, especially in this format. And for our final hand traps, uh, we're playing the Triple Imperm. Uh, great hand trap, not once per turn, can't be hit by call by the grave. Uh, if you set it, you get the Column Negate, which is great too. Uh, so, you know, that's self-explanatory. Uh, so that's it for our main deck. We're playing 41 cards. Uh, I'm going to uh, take break in my uh, extra deck and explain to that. Uh, so for extra deck, 
Uh, first up, we're playing the two Mirror Jades. Uh, Mirror Jade is really good. Um, the you know it's pretty much the bread and butter combo. You get a non-targeting advantage uh, by sending one card and um, one card that lists Albaz as fusion material from the extra deck, and we're getting more support from it from the um, new set where the new uh, fusion monster came out. The set is escaping me at the moment. I don't remember the exact name, but um, Dimension Force, that's what it is. So we're getting that new uh, secret monster coming out Dimension, uh, Dimension Force. When that card drops, uh, this deck actually gets way better. Uh, I know people haven't read it, but man, that card is broken because it essentially allows you to search out uh, your fusion destinies on end phase for your follow-up turn. So it takes this deck to another level and gives you another level of utility. So I'm definitely... Uh, yeah, the, the extra deck will be changing when that card released. But for right now, two Mirror Jades. I feel two is the perfect amount. Uh, one, Lubelion, the Searing Dragon. I only play one. I feel two is not necessary. Only reason it's not necessary because you legit shuffle it back during the combo. So, you know, one is more than enough. Um, this card here, I'm playing double Albion, the Branded Dragon. I may bump this up to three. Uh... I can't tell you how many times I sent it both times off the Mirror Jade to resolve the set effect of the Brandon Traps. But there's a couple of cases where I needed to actually summon it properly to go into Dragoon play and additional combos. But I wasn't able to because both were engraved. So I'm really considering bumping this up to three. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to say it outright. I'm going to play this at three. Definitely bump up the third one because it's really worth it. Uh, next, we have the double Guardian Chimera. Uh, two is the perfect number. I've actually had to use two before, especially in a grand game. Uh, the effect of pop and draw comes up great, uh, especially in this build, because nine times out of ten, I'm drawing either like a hand trap or like a broken going second card, because, you know, you just saw the extra deck, so we're minimizing on the brick, so we should be seeing a lot better cards. Guardian Chimera is really great, especially being 33 attack and defense. Those stat lines are really hard to get over, and it's very powerful monster to, uh, to, to play against. Uh, we also have the double Masquerade, the Blazing Dragon. Masquerade is great. Uh, if, you do, if I'm not able to OTK you and kill you, I'm going to go into Masquerade to put as many, try to get both of them on the field because that cost adds up and there's been situations where I legit locked my opponent out of the game because he just can't pay the life points and I'm winning that game. Even if he has the out, he can't pay the cost to play it, so that's my game right there. These are just free wins. Uh, but I'm considering cutting this to one so I can make room for the third um, uh, Albion, the Branded Dragon. But this card is really good. Um, I should, oh, I would recommend playing it. Uh, I would like to keep it at two, but we're still working on the ratio. But definitely play it at at least one minimum. Uh, we're also playing the Despian Quartarius. Quartarius is really good. So essentially, if you're playing a non-fusion deck, and if you can resolve this before the battle phase, everyone's at zero. So there's no way they're going to be able to swing over your board. So that effect comes up really clutch. And if they out this card, he has an effect where he could special summon a Despia monster or an Albaz monster, which comes in clutch. So if you want, so if they out him, you could special summon an Albaz and trigger the special summon effect immediately to super poly a, a monster. So this card is actually really good. Uh, definitely play it at one. Uh, for the spice, uh, turns out. I may be the only person playing this card, but I agree on playing it. We have the boss monster of the deck, the Despian Proskinion. Proskinion is broken. So essentially, he's made by using a Despian monster, a light monster, and a dark monster. In a mirror match, this comes up a lot because essentially, you're super partying almost all the materials to make him. And he has another effect. Uh... During the main phase, you can target one fusion, synchro, exceed, or link monster in your opponent's graveyard. Banish it or special summon it to your field. <laughs> when this card destroys an opponent monster by battle, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack or defense, whichever is higher. You can only use each effect of Perskidion once per turn. This is really boss monster level card right here. Um, especially when you're in a format where DPE is prevalent, I can't tell you how many times I've either banished someone's DPE or bought it back myself to attack and pop. This card is broken. Great card. I can't picture myself cutting it. It's worthy of boss monster status. This card is really good, and it's not very hard to make. And even if I had to make it on my own, you can make it off the Lubelion and just shuffle that back and just shuffle the materials, and you have them on the field. This card is freaking really strong. And most people aren't playing it right now, but it's one of me games, and I do feel it has the potential to catch on. 
Um, and we're playing our three super poly targets. So we're playing the Predator Plant, the Starving Venom, and my Spice, the Outledge, the Mad Golden Lord. My Locals, Outledge is a very popular deck. And making this with Super Poly is essentially a win condition because this monster here is very strong against Outledge themselves because a lot of their cards can't pop this or out this. And if they have like two Golden Lords on the field and you make them use both Golden Lords to make this, then you out of both the Golden Lords. You put yourself in a very good position and I won games off of him specifically for that matchup. So I do really, I'm a big fan of this card. And number 15, the number Gala card, the Starlight Dragoon. You know, it's Dragoon. Also, another great card to break out against the Outlets matchup and control decks in general. Also, Dragoon, never make him turn one because that line of playing really doesn't do anything. Dragoon is the monster you go to when you're in a grind game and you want to establish dominance because he's super hard to out. He gives you a negate. Uh, really good when you have these situations where you're in the grinding out to your opponent. If you have the extra discard fodders for cards that just aren't needed, oh my god, man. That, that free negate and un, uh, destruction protection and not being able to be targeted just is just too valuable to give up. Um, as long as Dragoon's around, I'll keep playing this card and, you know, if I can make him, I'll play him. Uh, we'll go to our side deck. Uh, for our side, it's always personal preference, but for my particular locals and my play style, I um, I went with the triple nibs because uh, combo decks are a thing. Um, I know the Phantom Knight deck is super popular. Uh, Prank Kids is super popular. Uh, so I know they love his special summon. So this is a card that usually hit them. I know nib is not really good this format. It's like, you know, some people are debating, debating this card, but I definitely recommend playing it at the side at least. Uh, triple Droll and Lockbird, essentially the same thing for the Nibib, uh, for the Nib, combo decks, decks I like to search a lot, especially variants of Despia that plays like the Adventure Package or the Frankfurt Package, you do a lot of um, excessive searching, so resolving this against them before they get to any of the crucial combo pieces is essentially them passing that turn, that card is very good. Uh, for board breakers and back row decks, Despia has a very tough time against back row matchup because floodgates are a thing and they kind of suck to play against. So I'm playing the triple lightning storm. Uh, lightning storm stuff is explanatory. Um, feather duster's at one, so uh, this is like, hey, if I need a feather duster or regeki, depending on the situation, lightning storm is going to be my go to. Uh, also, another god core for our back row decks. Gotta love the evenly match. Evenly match is really good this format, <laughs> really good against Outledge, really good against uh, Despia. A lot of cards aren't playing too many negates, so they can't really stop this unless they see the judgment. So evenly match, um, evenly match is one of my favorite side cards of all time. I probably been playing it since the day it came out. Since I got my play set, it's literally been in my side. And for this format, something I've been taking so I can go second, uh, you know, playing against the DPEs and all, uh, the negate boards and whatnot. I'm playing triple lava golem. Uh, reason for Lava Golem, everyone's not ending on three monsters, so that's why um, I feel he's better than the Sphere Mode. Also, he has the effect. So, it, there's been situations where I summon him on my opponent's side of the field, and when they tried to interrupt my Lubellion play, I was able to resolve my droplets, sending uh, the Lubellion to negate the Lava Golem to play around it. Also, the burn damage also comes up clutch, especially in time. And, you know, it's a 3k beat stick for your opponent, but also it's essentially real easy to out. So he's not really a threat for you. Also, the two monsters that are common, I usually always getting rid of, like, the winged, uh, the adventurer wing beast and the uh, DPE before they get a chance to resolve it. And, and every time this card gets summoned, you could just see the demoralization on your opponent's face. <laughs> But anyway, uh, these are my card choices. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, I'm going to show you guys more deck profiles for the Despia. I'm going to show you how I was playing it before with the Frightfur package as well as the Adventure package. Because, like, don't get me wrong. I personally didn't like it because it was too bricky. But when I did play them and the comms went off, boy, did they go off. The ceiling was a lot more strong than the pure variant. I will say that. But again, I prefer consistency over the ceiling. Uh, but if you like this deck profile and want to see more videos, uh, please give me a like and subscribe below. Uh, feel free to comment any thoughts or changes you think I may want to take in consideration. Uh, thank you for watching Team Misplay. This is your boy Russ. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.